A rig is complicated, but easier to understand if divided into related parts. In this section, we will cover the equipment used in hoisting. Hoisting equipment hangs or suspends the drill string in the hole. It also allows the driller to raise and lower the drill string into and out of the hole. Further, it allows the driller to adjust the weight on the bit, which is required to make the bit drill. The equipment used in hoisting is shown here. The crown block, the traveling block and hook, the drilling line, the drilling line supply reel, the deadline to crown block, the fast line to draw works, the draw works, and the deadline anchor. Here's an overview of how the hoisting system operates. The supply reel stores drilling line. To reeve the line, crew members start at the deadline anchor. They pull the line from the supply reel and spool it around the disc on the anchor. They then lift the line to the top of the mast, to the crown block. Crew members then reeve the line several times between the crown block shivs and the traveling block shivs. The number of times depends on how much weight the system needs to lift. In this case, they ran the line five times between the two blocks to create ten lines. Once they've strung the right number of lines, they run the line to the draw works and firmly clamp the line to the drum. The driller then takes in the drilling line, which wraps around the drum. The driller usually takes in enough line so that the line makes at least six wraps around the drum. They then clamp the line at the deadline anchor. As the driller activates the draw works to take in line, the traveling block moves up. The driller uses the brake to stop the traveling block at any position. When the driller releases the brake, the force of gravity pulls the traveling block down. The rig builder mounts the crown block at the top of the mast. The crown block has several pulleys, called shivs. The block manufacturer mounts the shivs side by side on a shaft. The drilling line runs over the grooves in the shivs. Sometimes, like this one, the crown block has a special fast shiv. The drilling line runs over the fast shiv as it leaves or enters the side-by-side -side shivs on the crown block. Crown blocks have load ratings that range from about 420 to 1400 tons, about 380 to 1300 metric tons. Shiv diameters range from 42 to 72 inches, or about 107 to 180 centimeters. A traveling block also has several side-by-side -side shivs. A steel housing encloses them. Crew members thread or reeve the drilling line over the shiv. A hook is attached at the bottom of the traveling block. The hook suspends the swivel, kelly, and drill string, or a top drive and drill string. This is a traveling block on an offshore floating rig. It has a drill string motion compensator. The motion compensator is between the traveling block and the hook. Offshore floating rigs move up and down with sea movement. The motion compensator maintains drill string position by counteracting up and down vessel movement or heave. On some semi-submersibles and drill ships, rig owners mount the motion compensator on the crown or the top of the derrick. The compensator eliminates the motion of the drill string from the hook to the bit. As the vessel moves up and down, hydraulic pressure inside a piston and cylinder keep the hook in a fixed position relative to the seafloor. The compensator keeps the drill bit on the bottom of the hole within the weight on bit limits set by the driller. A typical compensator can compensate for up and down movement as much as 15 to 25 feet four and a half to seven and a half meters. Typically, two sizes of motion compensator are available. One can handle loads up to 400,000 pounds, or about 180,000 kilograms. Another one, which is bigger, can handle loads up to 600,000 pounds, or about 270,000 kilograms. Some traveling blocks have built-in hooks. They are a single integrated unit. The combination hook block is shorter 
and therefore allows more traveling distance when mass type is limited. Typical combination hook blocks have load ratings ranging from 175 tons to 650 tons, about 160 to 590 metric tons. Some traveling blocks and hooks are separate units. In this type, the bail of the hook fits into a clevis on the bottom of the traveling block. Crew members suspend the swivel and drill string from the hook. They open the hook's latch, insert the swivel's bail, and close the hook's latch. A safety catch ensures that the hook stays latched. Separate traveling blocks are available in load ranges from 100 to 1,250 tons, or about 90 to 1,125 metric tons. Shiv diameters range from 24 to 72 inches, 61 to 183 centimeters, that's 2 to 6 feet, or over half a meter to nearly 2 meters in diameter. Hooks have load ratings of from 350 to 1,000 tons, about 300 to 900 metric tons. The hook has two link ears. The crew attaches one piece forged links and an elevator to the ears. They lock the links to the ears with the link locking arms. Crew members latch the elevator to tubulars, joints of drill pipe and other types of pipe, as they run them into and out of the hole. Crew members latch the elevator around the top joint of the drill pipe. Then, when the driller takes in drilling line, the traveling block goes up, raising the elevator and attached pipe. Conversely, when the driller lowers the traveling block, the elevator and attached pipe also go down. Crew members use many types of elevators, which one depends on the kind and size of the tubulars. For example, most drill pipe and lifting subs require a center latch bottleneck elevator, but some drill collars require a side door collar type elevator. Tubing, a lightweight pipe used in completing wells, usually needs a slip type tubing elevator. Casing, large pipe the crew lines the hole with, requires a special heavyweight casing elevator. The two types here are the single joint casing pickup type and the 500 ton or 450 metric ton casing elevator spider. Most hooks have two locks, a rotation lock and an automatic positioner lock. Crew members use a long steel rod called a shepherd stick or a chicken hook to unlock and lock the rotation lock and the automatic hook positioner. When crew members unlock the rotation lock, they rotate the hook to make the elevator face in the desired direction. Once positioned, they lock the rotation lock to keep the hook in position. Crew members can also release the rotation lock when the hook needs to rotate freely. The other lock, an optional automatic hook positioner, prevents rotation of the elevator links when the hook is traveling empty. Normally, just before making a trip in cased hole, crew members unlock the rotation lock, turn the hook, and relock it so that the elevator faces the derrick man. This makes it easy for him to latch and unlatch the elevator. If crew members are tripping pipe in open hole, they activate the automatic hook positioner. This lets the hook rotate freely when hoisting the drill string. Allowing the drill string to turn an open hole as it is being pulled keeps it from damaging the hole and prevents the reeved drilling line from twisting. Then, when the elevator reaches the derrick man and the driller stops hoisting, the positioner automatically rotates the elevator into correct position for the derrick man. Inside the hook is a hydraulic snubber. The snubber is like a shock absorber. It prevents drill pipe bounce and tool joint damage when spinning out the connection.